We're ready to begin texture painting our treasure chest, so it's no longer this boring gray color, but instead a vibrant brown to represent the wood, as well as a darker grayish, maybe even blue tinted color to represent the metal. And then beyond just color information, we will use that to influence material properties so that the metal pieces actually reflect like metal and interact with light as you would expect from a metallic object. And then the wood would also interact with light accordingly, be more dull and uh, certainly not metallic. And while this process can get complex pretty quickly, we're going to keep it simple and just paint one global color map for all of our objects. But first, let's go over some terminology. I just used the word maps, which refers to texture maps, also called textures. And textures are simply two-dimensional image files that are applied to a three-dimensional object. And to go from 2D to 3D, you need to translate that data. And that translation part is referred to as UV unwrapping. You can think of it as a reverse origami, where you start from a 3D object, and then you cut it and unfold it so it lays flat. Once it's flat, you can apply or paint a 2D image onto it. If that's not making complete sense to you, I think once you see this in action, it will. So let's get started. Now, for this project, thankfully, almost every piece is based on a rectangle. And so that will be very easy to lay out. And to illustrate why this is the case, I'm going to add a mesh cube and then scale it so that it uh, matches our wooden boards. So we'll scale it in X, Y to make it skinny, and then Z. Essentially, this is the kind of wooden board that we are talking about. Now, if you've ever had a cardboard box, say from Amazon, that you wanted to cut apart and lay flat, you already have a jump start on how you would UV unwrap this object. So the first part is cutting what are called seams, just like if you were to take a razor blade and cut the edges of that cardboard box. So if we tab into edit mode and go to edge selection, I wanna select these three edges, control E, mark seam. All right, so along this bright red line, the mesh is going to be separated and then laid flat. So where we place the seams is very important. Now, continuing with that cardboard box analogy, we would wanna cut these edges as well, control E, mark seam. And then finally, we need to cut one edge the full length of the box, control E, mark seam. Now before I actually do the unwrapping, let's switch over to UV edit mode or the UV editing uh, workspace. And you can see that we have a 3D viewport on the right and on the left we have the UV image editor which is a 2D space. And this grid is where we're going to lay flat our 3D model. But we have to have faces selected before we see them show up over here. So I'm going to hit the A button to select everything in the 3D view. And now you can see we have UVs. Since this started as a box, they have default UVs for the primitive shapes. And that's what's left over here. However, we scaled this down and I need to apply the scale. So I'm jumping to object mode, control A, apply the scale, then tab back into edit mode. And we want to see the stretching, right? Because this perfectly square paneled layout does not seem to correlate well to what we see in three dimensions. And to illustrate this, um, in the UV image editor, I'll hit the N key to bring up our end panel and look at the view properties. And under overlays, we can enable stretching. Specifically, I want not the angle type, but the area type of stretching. So now we're looking at green and red colored squares. In this overlay mode, the closer you get to red, the more stretched out your UVs are. For example, if we switch to uh, face mode and select this face, you'll notice it's pure red because the stretching is extreme. Over in the 3D view, we have a long rectangle, but in the UV image editor, it's a perfect square. So that shape is being compressed and that's a problem for the translation from the 2D to the 3D. Instead, we want all of the colors to be as close to blue as possible, which represents the least amount of stretching. And so this default UV layout is not optimal. With everything selected and our seams cut, I can hit the U hotkey and choose unwrap. Now we're looking at perfectly blue faces in our UV editor, meaning that this is an ideal optimal layout. And hopefully you can see how it translates as if this were a cardboard box that you cut along the edges and unwrapped flat. And if you can unwrap this shape, then you can unwrap the majority of shapes in the treasure chest, including the metal brackets that are rectangles, the boards themselves, even this piece uh, in the middle that has the additional thickness. 
The only things that are a little bit different are the rivets and the metal rim uh, at the box opening. But that's uh, my best overview of the UV process. Now we just need to apply this, we can delete that object, to our treasure chest. So let's grab this one right here. And I'll go to local view, tab into edit mode. And even though we have a lot more edges involved here, it's still the essential shape as that rectangle we just deleted. So I wanna make sure I'm in edge select mode. And you know we selected these edges to be hard or to be sharp rather. And that's gonna get distracting. So I wanna turn that off in our overlays options. Let's turn off sharp. And remember, I wanna select this edge loop around the end. So holding Alt, I'm gonna click that. Since it is an edge loop, it connects, it should connect all the way around. If it doesn't, for some reason, like if a triangle cuts off the uh, flow of that edge loop, just select them until they're all connected. And just like that rectangle, I wanna leave one edge along the face, the front face, or rather the front side, I should say. I want them to be unselected so that they don't become seams. So here I'm going to use the C circle select hotkey. And when I middle mouse click and drag, that will unselect whatever I move my cursor over. All right, so this, if we go to wireframe view, is exactly the same format as that simple rectangle. Let's do the same thing down here. Shift alt clicking to add to the selection. So here it did not complete the edge loop. So I just need to click again, shift alt click to complete that edge loop. And then deselect with circle select uh, the front side. All right, now we just need one edge to run all the way along the length, cutting from seam to seam. Control E, mark seam, select everything. You can see how the default UVs are kind of butchered. So U in the 3D view, unwrap, there we go. Now we do have a couple options for unwrapping, a couple methods, the angle-based method or the conformal method. Now, as I switch between these two, they're pretty similar. There's maybe a tiny bit more stretching with the angle-based, so maybe conformal is gonna be a slightly better option, but just keep in mind that you do have a choice between those two. I think conformal is working best in this situation. All right, so that is really simple. We don't have any overlapping UVs. We want to make sure that that's the case, but with simple shapes like this, it's definitely not the case, meaning we don't have any overlapping. So we are good to go, and the vast majority of the faces are blue, so we're ready to move on to the next piece. We'll leave local view, and while I'm still in edit mode, this brings up a next point. Remember, we are sharing a lot of data between objects. Remember, that helped us to model, so we got the most amount of output for the least amount of work. And that principle still applies to UV editing, because any objects that are sharing object data also share UVs. So in the case of this object, if I hit Shift L to bring up our select linked option and object data, all of these objects now have those same UVs. So what I like to do is hide all of the objects that are sharing object data so that I can go one by one for just the objects that need explicit UVs. So in this situation, I can hide all of these objects because they're sharing data with this. In this situation, shift L object data, I can hide all of these others. So the way I'm doing this is select one object, shift L for selecting the linked. Then I will be box select and middle mouse drag to deselect the active object hide the others, do the same here. I just know that one of these is uh, sharing object data, so we can hide the other. Up here, I think these are all unique, so we will have to lay out each one individually. In this situation, up top, Shift L to select linked by object data, that's the only one. What about this one? Excellent, I can hide these other two and run through the entire model until I'm left with only the unique pieces visible. I think this one's unique, this one's unique, this one's all mirror modifier. What about this guy? And then the rivets, I know that they're all sharing, though I think one thing is a little bit odd with these. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to apply the scale for our rivets, which messes up um, when we share object data. I can't hit Control A and apply the scale. We just get a bunch of errors. So I need to make these all single users first. So pardon me while I fix this very quickly. I'm gonna hit the spacebar key, which is my tool search. I'm gonna look up the word single. 
make single user. This is essentially breaking the links of object data and uh, selected objects. And then I also have to tell it object data down here. All right, now they shouldn't be sharing object data at all. Control A to apply the scale. Perfect, I do want this applied because that has consequences when laying out UVs if they're not applied. And now I can relink them with Control L, object data. And then get back to hiding everything but the active H. All right, so now I am left with all the objects that need to be laid out. And uh, to even further simplify the visual, because you know, when you look at the whole box, you can think, wow, I've got a lot left to UV, but it's not actually the case. So I'm trying to simplify the visual so that it's a better representation of the actual work I have to do. And to further simplify, I can select everything and disable all the mirror modifiers. So in this case, uh, whatever I have active, the rivet does not have a mirror modifier. How about this one? All right, now with that object active, I can hold the Alt key and click the display modifier and viewport toggle. All right, that will disable all mirror modifiers for objects that have one. Excellent, so this, this simplified version of the model is all that needs UVs. Now, since I've already laid out this object, I'm gonna move it to a collection, a temporary collection, just for my, uh, my own organization. I'm gonna call it UV. Okay, so I know I've laid that out exactly how I want it. So to check it off the list, so to speak, I've moved it to the UV collection and then I will hide that object as well. So now I can move on to the next one and as I keep laying them out, the visible objects will be fewer and fewer until I'm done. I like to work this way, especially when using a model that has a bunch of different pieces. It uh, serves as a checklist, essentially. So let's move on to this next wooden board and it's the exact same approach. Go to UV, um, I'm sorry, edge select mode. And you can also go to local view here to just focus on this object specifically. I wanna deselect this side of edges. Do the same down here. Make sure that that connects. Okay, it does. And then one edge along the uh, length of the board, mark seam, U unwrap. Perfect. Mostly blue, no overlapping UVs, excellent. Let's uh, leave local view. I'm gonna move this to the UV collection and then hide it. And yeah, so literally it's this exact same workflow for all of the wooden boards specifically, and even some that aren't the wooden boards. So the metal brackets, they, uh, if you think about their shape, they really are just rectangles that have been curved into that arc. Let me unwrap this, perfect move it to the UV collection, hide it. And so I'm going to jump forward in time. To the point where I have unwrapped all of the wooden boards so you don't have to see that over and over again. And speaking of that bracket, so yeah, this is essentially that same rectangular shape, but it's just been bent into this arc. So the same kind of thing, deselect the front edge so that that will open up cleanly, but it will also stay attached. So that's something I haven't mentioned, mark seam. So something I like to do when I'm unwrapping is if I can, I wanna keep all of the UV islands connected the same way that the object is connected, right? So if I wanted, I could cut a seam right here, mark seam, unwrap again, and then I've cut the UV islands into two pieces. That can be used to your advantage, but primarily for visual organization, I like to keep them connected if at all possible. So I'm going to undo that until I get back to the connected UV island. And then we are done with this, so move it to the UV collection, hide it. Now for this, even though we have the additional thickness on the end, it can still work well enough uh, using that rectangular unwrap uh, mindset. So let's go to local view. The biggest difference is I'm going to make sure to cut my seam down the front edge, the front side. You know, I've typically been doing it on the back side like this but for, for this piece, I'm going to cut it down the front. But the same situation, deselecting these edges 
around the ends and then control E mark seam, you unwrap. Now, I think that the conformal method does not work quite as well here. If we switch it over to angle based, it's much more blue. There is a little bit of stretching. It, it enters into the teal, slightly greenish range, but that's gonna be fine. It's not perfect, but it's not far off from perfect. If this was getting into the yellow range and especially orange, that becomes problematic and you wanna fix that, but the teal range, not really that big of a deal. All right, so with that being done, go to uh, leave local view, move it to the UV collection, hide it. Same thing with this. Now, uh, conveniently, there's these two triangles that stop our loop selection exactly where we want it. So that's just uh, very nice of Blender to, to do us that solid. All right, we're selecting this front edge, Control E, Mark Seam, U, Unwrap. There we go, and this one's even more blue. Now with that keyhole, I'm not worried about it turning to green because it's such a small part of the model. There's very little chance that I'm gonna be this close uh, where I would notice you know, pixel stretching or pixelization due to the stretching. So I'm fine with, with that uh, being a green level stretch. All right, move to the uh, UV collection, hide it. And then this is the last couple rectangle pieces. So let's uh, do those quickly. Now, before I hide this, this piece is actually identical in mesh topology to this piece back here. So we can actually copy UVs when that's the case. So I can, uh, I believe the selection is target first, source last, control L to transfer UV maps. Now tab into edit mode to make sure that this worked. It did work, but there's a couple green polygons compared to this one, which is all blue. So even though that did transfer, and so you know, that is possible, but there must be something up with the, uh, maybe scaling this in a uh, negative direction or something is causing it. So I'll just go ahead and cut these edges again. Control E, well, let me deselect. Control E, mark seam. There we go. So yeah, it looked like it just kind of flipped or something, but anyway. Those are the last rectangle bits. We can move them to the UV collection, hide it. And now for this, um, oh yeah, we do have a couple hinged pieces too, I forgot about. Um, for the lid opening ring, it's a little bit different. One thing I know I want to do is cut an edge all the way around the ring shape. I'm gonna do it on the inside edge. Just like this. Now, if you can imagine this was like a donut shape, if you can't tell, it really helps me to compare whatever shape I'm unwrapping with a simplified primitive. So in this case, like a donut or torus, then it's like cutting that in half and laying it out flat. Let's do it with Control E Mark Seam. Select everything you unwrap. But the problem with this is that it stretches out one side and then compresses the other. So the outer ring is is stretched and then the inner ring is compressed. So to relieve that, I'm going to cut another edge all the way around like this. Control E mark seam, U unwrap. That's a relief cut essentially so that now it can lay out flat and it doesn't have to maintain the ring shape. So this is excellent, but it's a lot longer than any other shape that we've laid out so far. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another edge loop on the other side, just like this. Make sure it connects, Control E, Mark Seam. So I'm somewhat breaking my rule, it's not really a rule, but my first preference to keep everything connected, I'm breaking that um, so that this, you know, matches more the proportion of the UV islands from our wooden boards. And since uh, if I can keep all of these UV islands to a rectangular type shape, then when I pack the islands, that's gonna be better for that algorithm. And you'll see what I mean when we get there, but that's the layout for the ring. Let's move it to the UV collection, hide it. Now for these guys, let's see, for the middle, I had two mirror modifiers uh, on it. I forgot that. So let me apply the first one. All right, so now this is one solid sheet, solid piece. And uh, how am I gonna unwrap this? I'm gonna cut edges 
all along the sides. And yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. Mark seam, select everything you unwrap. Okay, not quite. Oh yeah, I need a relief cut going this way. Control E, mark seam, you unwrap. There we go, entirely blue. I'm also breaking my first preference by separating this. If I were to keep it attached, Control E, clear seam, and let's unwrap that. Um, they are attached, which I like for convenience, but it's such a weird shape now. It's a rectangle in the middle, but it's got these two little antenna or almost arm shapes that makes it difficult for packing because the packing algorithm will avoid filling this empty space. So it's a waste of texel density, which is the term referred to the relationship of pixels in an image versus the surface area those pixels will take up uh, on the UV islands. But anyway, that's why I am breaking this apart. Control E, mark seam because now uh, we've got a rectangular shape and then a long skinny shape. So that will work good for the algorithm to pack it well. And so we can move that to the UV collection, hide it, do the same thing here. Edge all the way around the outside, one relief cut, select everything you unwrap, there we go. UV collection and hide it. And yeah, so the rivet is the last thing you know, it's already a flattened sphere already, so we can probably get away with just cutting an edge along the uh, outside circumference. Control E, mark seam, U, unwrap. And I will leave these separate because if I want, I can scale these way down. This is the back side, and so it's really never going to be seen. I want it to be there geometrically so that it casts proper ambient occlusion, whereas a hole in the back side of the geometry would not do that properly. But this is just an example where it's very unimportant for texel density, so we can scale that way down so it's not even really relevant. And so that's why it would make sense to split it if we wanted to. So that's gonna be fine. And now, if I leave local view, all right, I wasn't even in local view, this is our last piece. So by moving the objects to that collection and hiding, you know, we've reached the end of the checklist. Now I know all of my objects have their UVs, so I can Alt-H to bring everything back. And then also I need to re-enable our mirror modifier, or I should say mirror modifiers, plural. So I've got everything selected. Let's select an object with the mirror modifier, alt click on that display in viewport. And now they should all be back. Excellent. The only thing left to do is take all of those objects in our UV collection, which if I go to my outliner, right click on the UV collection and choose select objects. Tabbing into edit mode for all of these objects, shows their UVs collectively in our UV grid space. And at the moment, they're all overlapping, which is not ideal. We need them to be evenly spaced inside this grid and not overlap. So we've got a couple tools that will make this easy. I need to select everything, not only in the 3D view, but also in the UV image editor and uh, go to UV. And first I want to do this average island scale because since we laid out the UVs individually per object, they did not correlate to each other's scale values. And so by averaging the scale, they now do correlate. And after I do that, I can go to UV pack islands. All right, so this is the even distribution I'm looking for. However, we can control the margin, like the distance between the islands. And by default, you know, they're actually pretty close. I wanna give it a little bit more space. So um, let me, increase the margin. You can see how this, how they kind of jump around and I'm just looking for something that takes the most amount of space and leaves the least amount of empty space. Probably something along these lines. Yeah, I'm thinking about 0.02. Now we do have some empty space, which is annoying it's technically a wasted amount of data for that texture that we will use. But for a simple project like this, I'm not worried about it. This will uh, work out fine for our purposes. And so the final test for our UVs, I'm going to switch to the shader editor and let's add a material, the same material to all of our treasure chest pieces. We can uh, create the material. Let's see, there's already a material. Let's just rename this to treasure chest and then control L in the 3D view to link the materials. And now I want to add with the shift A, 
Oh yeah, this is your first time in the shader editor. So don't worry if this is brand new to you and you're not really following along. Just pay attention to the buttons that I'm pressing. And once we get to the texturing and shadering portions, I'll explain more about what this editor is. But for now, we just want to add a texture, image texture node, and then hit new. We are essentially creating a new texture and I'm going to make it about 2048 by 2048 and I'll call it UV underscore test and change the generated type to a UV grid. Okay. And then let me make sure that I have the node Wrangler tool enabled. It's in the add-ons and I'm gonna search for node Wrangler. And yes, it is enabled. So with that enabled, I can hold shift control, click on that and it will be plugged into a viewer node. Now, if I switch to the look dev viewport setting, we see a checkered grid, which serves as a test image for how our UVs are laid out. Now, the it looks really even, right? At least in most places, but there are some problem areas. The hinge is too big in the UV map. So that must mean that the scale was not applied. See, if we go to our, uh, item tab in the view properties. Yeah, so our scale is not applied there. And then the rivets are also really big. I'm not sure why that's the case. Let's see, if we select everything, tab into edit mode, and then we can split our window and look at the, let's see, UV image editor. Now I guess it's just called the UV editor. Aha, so I did not have, oh, that's right. I didn't put the rivets in the UV collection, that's the reason. So they weren't part of the packing and is that the same for the hinge? No, those were part of it, but they didn't have the scales applied. So control A, let's apply, since these aren't sharing object data, I should be able to apply the scale. Apply the scale. All right. And did I move this to the UV collection? It's there now. Let's try that again. Select all the objects in the UV collection. All right, now they're all in there and I can go do that same process of um, making sure everything's selected in the UV image editor, average the island scale, and then do the packing again. Just trying to find Ooh, that looks better. Is that enough space? Yeah, that's enough space in between the islands. Okay, so we've packed them, we've repacked them, we've averaged their scale. Okay, now you can see that the rivets, the hinges, everything is sharing a similarly sized checker in that checkerboard texture. The only issues comes at the corners, which are being stretched. Remember, those are the only areas that have uh, that yellow to orangish color. So if I wanna solve that, because that's pretty noticeable, I think I will try and solve it. So let's uh, let's see here. Instead of cutting edges, cutting seams here, Control E, I'm gonna clear those seams. And let's do it at the corner instead. I guess do it on all four corners. That one went all the way around, nice. Control E, mark seam. You unwrap. Okay, that is, I think, much better. We're into the teal, slightly greenish region. That's better than yellow, orange. All right, so we'll roll with this, and then we need to do the uh, repacking. So I'll select everything. UV, average island scale, and then UV pack. That looks quite good. Since these, again, I said this earlier, but since they are rectangular in shape, the vast majority of these, it works out really well for the packing algorithm. And uh, quite frankly, the packing algorithm for in Blender is not great. So uh, laying things out this way helps it along. But it's also a simple model, so it just works out for this project. And now we can officially be happy with our UVs laid out. There we go, you can see at the corners, they're much less stretched. Excellent, so this means the model is ready to accept a texture, which we will begin painting in the next lesson.